you have gaps. You don't just accidentally eat the right foods to fill all the vitamin. There are trillions of cells in your body and they are powered by vitamins and minerals. That's what they're powered by. Those are the spark plugs. This is All Things Fitness and Wellness hosted by Chrissy Van. Together, we're uniting industry thought leaders and fitfluencers on the mission to inspire innovation and encourage people to live a life fit and well. Brought to you by the Personal Training Institute. Learn how to train, gain, and retain clients. Visit bcpti.ca. Did you know that approximately 80% of Americans incorporate dietary supplements into their daily routine? In today's episode, we're excited to welcome Neil Spruce, the founder and CEO of DotFit, as well as All-in-One Super Blend and former owner of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Neil is an individual who doesn't shy away from speaking his mind. During our podcast, he narrates his intriguing transition from an outlaw biker to a bodybuilder and now to a pioneer in advocating for longevity through nutrition. Throughout the episode, Neil talks about the concerning reality of the dietary supplement industry. He highlights the alarming prevalence of mislabeling, underformulation, and the presence of contaminants and banned substances in many mass market products. His insights extend beyond mere critique, though, as he offers practical advice in addressing nutritional gaps. Before we get to it, be sure to hit like and subscribe. We have new podcast episodes every Wednesday featuring industry thought leaders and influencers. Plus, every other Monday, we have Exercise Snacks Bite Size Science. These snack-sized episodes explore the latest science and research directly from the scientists and researchers themselves. I'm your host, Chrissy Van, and this is ATFW. I'm so thrilled to have you, especially because we're kicking off a new year. And I really think that we've been in this massive time of evolution over the last couple of years when it comes to what we are prioritizing in our lives. Never before have we recognized the power of being an active participant in our own health. I think greatly, especially from a Western society, for a very long time, you didn't really worry about it unless your health decided to kick you in the ass and you had to worry about it. And mentality wise, I also think we've had a lot of disconnects over what the right path is. And for you, Neil, I know you've had tremendous experience within the industry itself. You're familiar to so many, but can you kind of give a brief highlight reel to people that aren't familiar with your background and to how you forayed into fitness in the first place? Well, you know, I grew up playing sports my whole life and, and sports was really it for me. But at the same time, I didn't have a, a family uh, unit. I would I lived with many different families before I was 16. And so sports and fitness just saved my life. It kept me from going to the dark side. I actually uh, grew up motorcycle gangs as well. So that oh, wow. got me I ride a motorcycle that. as well, but oh, uh, just yeah. uh... Just with the guys. I, know, I make the quip. I make the quip. I make the quip today. Back in my day, the only guys that had Harleys were bad guys. Now today, the only people that have Harleys are rich guys. Yeah. You know, so they completely <laughs> that really love completely repairs. World. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, but yeah, if I would have gone really deep otherwise. But sports and fitness saved my life. So that's what started the whole thing. And then I realized with when I started bodybuilding, the power of nutrition that you can make your body change every day with nutrition. You can build, you know, something completely different when you're paying attention to it. You can, it, it can look different daily, weekly. It can feel different, all these different things where obviously exercise can't do that. So exercise was just a minor part of my journey. The journey was nutrition, filling up all the gaps, you know, it felt filling in the gaps for exercise. So that's kind of how it started. And then I started, uh, Gold's Gym hired me. I was one of the top bodybuilders in the country there back in the day. So they hired me after I won the Mr. Western America to say, hey, we've heard you do nutrition seminars. And, um, you know, I would love, we're going to open up gyms all over the world. You know, they only had Venice at that time, which is still the most famous gym in the world. And uh, they said, we'd love to have you just be a part of our organization to, op to do those nutrition seminars and, op and open up our gyms with something different. So we have nutrition in. And I said, well, that's a no brainer for me. I'm in. So uh, I did that, and the rest is history. I built the first nutrition program in, uh, in the entire gym industry, and that evolved, you know, as we kept going and going and going, not just with goals. I got, we had 500 different goals gyms. We had the nutrition, and then once I retired from bodybuilding, started Apex. That moved to National Academy of Sports Medicine. I bought the National Academy of Sports Medicine, built that program, which is still the largest in the world today. 
Um, and then, you know, I met my partner, Mark Masteroff, who was, uh, you know, the, the perfect partner and we're still partners today. So we've been, a, nutrition has been a part of every one of our businesses, and which is why we're unarguably among the most successful clubs out there. Well, I'm just That's curious on that note, because where were you amassing your nutrition knowledge at that time? Aside from using your own physique, where you clearly, especially anyone that's done the competitive circuit, you can notice between days how you're impacting your body and especially show days and peak weeks, like the level of manipulation yeah. that can take place. But this also would have been a time where you didn't have the wealth of information available on the Internet. So how were you amassing this knowledge base? Yeah, I was. It was pretty much just self-induced, and the reason is, is because you know, and, I, and I'm that guy that not only did I not go to college, I never even drove by a college. You know, I mean, my my life was quite different. You know, if you did, you were probably like going that. 200 miles an hour yeah. on your bike. Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. With with all my outlaw friends that were 10 years older than me, you know, so <laughs> for sure, yeah, I never had that opportunity. So I I set I set out with four rules. Uh, that to help to get myself to be, it, again, my goal is to be the smartest guy in nutrition because of all these, what happened was in the, in the 70s uh, is when the world started getting fat, very fat, okay? I mean, we were we didn't have obesity until the, until the early 70s and then 80s and all these diet centers were coming out, you know, and uh, we all know that, there, and some of them are still around today, uh, but it was, and, and what they were doing was really putting people's bodies through really the worst kind of dieting, which is low calories, and they'd lose muscle, and they would be weaker, and they'd always gain it back. So I went on this this big quest to find out, you know, so to give people the information that we did. We actually could put on muscle while we lose body fat, and no one could even understand, how do you do that? You know, so that was it. So I built that formula just because we applied it to ourselves. Learned and learned more. I never stopped learning. Even got a teaching credential on nutrition for adult education, of course. And I went on and just kept studying and studying. I set those four rules. One, you know, I, I have to learn something every day. I was age 24 and I made this rules. One, you have to learn something every day that you can apply to your field, which of course was going to be nutrition. And then two, you have to exemplify. So you have E or four E's. So one is educate. Second one is exemplify. You better wear your brand. You better believe in what you're selling or forget it, right? Three, and then th uh, the uh, th third E was uh, execute. Have a one-year plan, five-year plan of where you're going to go and deliver on it. And then four, evolve to make sure you are where everybody is today, but you're ahead of them before they get there next. And that's kind of how the whole thing went together. Okay. I, I want to get into nutrition, but now I have immense curiosity. So you're 24. Okay. You've had this kind of very unique experience for a lot of people of this outlaw life and affiliation. And I know that you say that fitness is kind of the thing that you held on to and saved your life, but making a leap, it would have been very easy to stay in that. Generally, it's very difficult mm -hmm. to make a leap out of that lifestyle. Yep. What exactly was it where you were like, I'm actually going to get my shit together and do this? Yeah, you're right. I am an anomaly. Uh, all my friends, and I'm not exaggerating, all my friends I grew up are dead or in jail. Right. So, you know, it was, it was, if it wasn't for, I just, I, I loved it when I first competed in the Mr. San Francisco. Uh, I think I ended up third, but there was no weight classes back then. You got a hundred competitors, no weight classes, just one, two, three, whatever it was. And um, I mean, I remember actually, it was actually, I, I think I was fifth actually, because there's only three places. And I knew that was right there because that was the last one. I'm there. And I go, okay, this is it. This is what I want to do. I'm going to be the next Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, because Arnold was just that guy that, you know, anybody that ever lifted a weight. You know, I would just look up to, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that, and I just, I fell in love with it. You know, I just, I just got to this thing where I go, okay, I got to figure out how to make a living at it, and that's when I just buckled down right then, and I realized then that moment, I realized this just saved my life. I would be down that road with everybody else if I hadn't found this thing that just. It really just turned me on. This was just some fantastic feeling. So I just went there, boom, flipped the switch, and, and the rest is history. Good for you. And then when we talk about this history in the making, as you said, you were really at the forefront at these massive, I mean, we look at 24 hour fitness that completely changed the name of the game in the industry. So many people then trying to follow after in those footsteps and emulate it. It seems like there's many times that you could have been like, I'm retired and I'm done, honestly, <laughs> but you haven't decided to just take a retreat on the yeah. island. You really seem so passionate about people understanding that they can be an active participant in their health span, in their lifespan, in their quality of life. So where did this shift start to happen where you really were like, nutrition is it, and then ultimately wanting to bring dot fit to life? I think 
the success just brought more success and more success. And again, I can't take away from my partners, you know, and, and I, I'm not, I'm not trying to just give them kudos. They don't need kudos. You know, my partners, if it wasn't for them hearing me from the Jim Rollies, the Mark Mastros and Chris Smith, I mean, they, they have, they, if they weren't in the audience when I was talking, when they first met me and just go, we got to do that. Okay. I, I wouldn't be here. And, and, but they gave me the, su the success I needed to save the world. I made the commitment. That's me who made that original saying up at 24. I'm going to save the world through fitness. I'm not going to change it. I'm going to save it. Okay. I'm going to figure out how to change the world from the big pharma trap that they're stuck in to the health trap that we can get them into by making it easy. So that was always been my mission. And what happened is that CES, the breed of success, and then, of course, NESM and all the other companies that we've owned and, 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 and work together with Crunch now, UFC, and all these different things that we've been able to do. People keep asking, you know, we, we are going to retire. I'm at 71. I mean, so you, you've, you've already built the biggest companies and, and, and sold them and had bigger ones, you know, and so I go, I'm not done. I'm not even close to being done. I, and I have to have a purpose every morning when I get up. And so for me, I will save the world through fitness or I will die trying. I won't know I didn't do it. Well, and with that save the world through fitness, let's talk about that because we are heading into a new, the new year and we know what's going to happen. There's going to be... 90% of people that make the same goal that they do year over year. And then statistically, it's going to drop off by that first week of February. And I think from what I've understood, learning about yourself, a lot of times people are going in, let's say it's that weight loss goal with an incorrect mindset. Truthfully, I, I don't think that should necessarily be the goal that we say out of our mouths because it's not actually yeah. going to help increase health span. So talk to me a little bit about what you're helping people understand and what that misconception is over walking into a gym and what that experience really should be. Yeah, I think, well, first of all, if, if you're if you're talking about a gym or you're talking about health, and listen, I'm a gym guy. Not only did I grow up in the gym, I protect the gyms. I, I mean, I, we only deliver our nutrition through health clubs because I want you to be active and I want you to do that. So I, and I get Walmart, Amazon, every company in the world wants to carry what we carry the stuff we sell. And I just say no, because I want to make sure people are moving and they're using all this. So that, that's that's one thing. But you don't have to do that to help. You just you do have to move and just fill your nutritional gaps. You know, people just go from black to white. They just go, OK, you know, I, I screwed up this year. I'm just going to set a goal and I'm going to go for it. Well, you're just going to get you're just not able to adhere to it. You've got to find something that you can do and really just map that out. Just, hey, the first week I'll do this. Second week I'll do this. Third week I'll do this. You know, so it, 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 that's really always a problem. You know, and you start moving. You, so it has to be something realistic that you can do. And that's why one of the reasons we uh, we actually made the super blend was because that's you got to eat anyway. Just throw that into a protein shake and boom. So at least you've filled all your gaps. That's the first step of getting healthy. So you'll feel better every single day. Every day you're going to start feeling better and then it'll make you want to move. So you just got to knock it off little bits at a time. If you just make this grandiose dreams about what you're going to do, you're just not going to, you're not going to live into it. And the good thing about uh, uh, most of your good health clubs, I'm not just talking about ours. I'm talking about all of them out there. You, they will, they're, they want you to be there. They want you to stay there. They're going to give you the right roadmap. Don't be intimidated. Don't at all. There's no judgment. There's no anything. Get in there and help get them to help you move properly. You know, get a trainer. Everybody gets a free workout anyway. You know, if you can't afford a trainer after that, that's up to you. But the bottom line is that's what you want to do. So just let yourself go. Go in there and take it one step at a time. Well, and you talk about these nutritional gaps, and I think it would be really easy for a lot of people to listen and be like, yeah, I know. I should have more vitamins. I should have this. I should have X. Let's actually get a bit granular about what those gaps are and what it could mean when it comes to lifespan. Because at the end of the day, humans are living longer, but they're not necessarily living well. Yeah. Well, it's even worse than that, Chrissy. Let me, let me explain this to you. Okay, so here we are in the U.S., and there's a, there, there are what we call 50 peer nations. So for the audience that doesn't, maybe doesn't grasp what, that, what, what we're saying there, there are 50 nations that are equal in development and equal in econ economy, okay? And out of those 50 peer nations, we are dead last, dead last in life expectancy and dead last in health, health span. 
So our lifespan is the lowest and our health span is the lowest. Health span means that we are no longer, we're on, we're on, we have chronic disease, at, like at age 65 is really what the end, end of it is. Everybody's like one or two chronic diseases, 95 people are on medication, 95% on medication. It is a horrific stat. And that's because we've, we've, we've grown into this big pharma trap. If we allow ourselves to eat the way the food is brought to us because, you know, we are all obviously addicted to food. And, and some a are society of convenience. Ones. Convenience, right? And then we're trapped because our jobs don't allow us to move. Okay, we make a living sitting in a chair pretty much and then get in a car to go somewhere else, you know? So you got all these things working against you. And then you're eating that way. And then what you do is you end up on a drug, whether it be a diabetes drug, whether it be a drug for your heart, blood pressure, all these things that end up happening. And by the way, here's a stat that will probably blow your mind. 75% of every single adult in the United States, 75%. That's uh, 18 years or older is on daily medication for something. These are the statistics that will just make you want to throw up, you know, yeah. and it's just like, it's unbelievable because they get you. And uh, trust me, big pharma has no incentive to have people healthy. So going back to your, going back to your whole thing, you know, about uh, what is the most important thing to do? You have gaps. You don't just accidentally eat the right foods to fill all the vitamin. There are trillions of cells in your body and they are powered by vitamins and minerals. That's what they're powered by. Those are the spark plugs. And you don't get them. And every day they got to be replaced. That's why we have RDAs. That's why we have these essential nutrients. So you don't replace them all. So what happens is if you don't get them all, the ones your body can use, you just downregulate to that. And you just underperform every day. But worse than that, forget about the underperformance. Because most people can still make it to work, right? You can still go pr- practice basketball. You can still do whatever. You're just not doing as well as you could, for sure. But you're unprotected as life. It's early aging. You're going to be part of that statistic. Because everything is going to give out sooner. Because you built your house out of balsa wood and plywood rather than steel girders and four by fours, which is when you have all your vitamins and minerals and the right amount of protein daily, which is easy to get, okay, boom, you build a stronger house that will last longer into aging. And that's it. That's why you know you look at these other cultures that live so much longer than us and so much better than us. You know, so yeah, that's just that's fill your gaps from day one. So if I had one message to every single human being out there, Get the right amount of protein along with all your vitamins and minerals, which and there's no way you're going to do it with food. You're either arrogant or naive if you think you can, okay? Period. I don't care what your doctor said. Don't ever ask a doctor about nutrition. That's not their job, okay? That's true. Fixing you when you're broken, that's different. You know, that's after the fact. Healthcare is someone that understands nutrition and uh, with true healthcare, uh, primary healthcare, and giving you all the right stuff. So fill your gaps and you can really stave off a lot of those things. And you also want to be active because you have more energy. So that's the biggest message I could give you. Yeah, I couldn't agree with that more. To be honest, that's really why I had a personal career flip because I've seen that in action. My dad was a type one diabetic, so had it since he was two. But as the years went on, the volume of medication that was involved And the reason why that volume became more and more exponential is because this one caused this ailment and this one caused this ailment. And it just became this cyclical thing of side effects, essentially. Whereas like people have the opportunity, as you mentioned, the chronic diseases over the age of 65, I guarantee the majority of those are preventable. We know that. We know that for sure. We know this for sure, and yet so many of the population aren't taking action, unfortunately. And then when they do, I think it can be a confusing landscape for a lot of people because, especially in the era of social media now, we have people that are very celebrated by their followers. That's why their followings have grown. And because of that, I get the term influencers. Often people roll their eyes, oh, they're an influencer. At the end of the day, it's, I can't remember the statistic recently, but it's like a billion upon billion dollar industry, the influencer economy. And they have a lot of power, but they're not always necessarily peddling the information that is best for the consumer. They're peddling information that they're getting paid to peddle. So how does one differentiate? Let's say they are wanting to fill the gaps. How are they to know if they're filling the gaps right. And maybe you can speak to some of the scary realities that are in the landscape that you operate alongside. 
Yeah. And so, you know, one of the reasons we are what you call a practitioner product in our, we have a holistic, you know, we have a nutrition program, so we can give you sample diets that within the calories that will match your goal, but also filling your gaps properly based on your age, your gender, okay, your typical diet. And that's what a practitioner does. So we live in the world of practitioner products, which is why we go through the gyms. Our trainers are all trained. They go get their certifications and they get their and they're able to give people the right information. And then a practitioner product, a dietary supplement that you would use to fill your gaps. If you are going to be one, you have to prove that you have the clinical doses of effective ingredients in it. And then you have to third party test it to make sure it's really in there. So you need two things. So when people say about my products, third party tests, it doesn't mean anything to me. I could care less. How do I know those ingredients are the right dosages? They clinically safe. The third party tests, you got vitamin C, it's got one milligram. Okay, there's one milligram of vitamin C. It's not going to do an ant any good or anybody else any good, but it's at least third party tested. But if you have a clinical dose of your vitamin C or your creatine or your B12 or your or the amount of lycopene, lutein, or zeaxanthine or these other uh, antioxidants, a clinical dose, which has been shown in clinical trials to be effective at uh, getting the health benefits you're looking for, whether it's reducing you know, certain markers or whether it's helping you know, uh, antioxidant protect all of this stuff and immune suppression, I mean, immune boost and so forth. I mean, these are the things that you would do. And then you put that in the product and then you third party test it. Now, the problem is, Chrissy, is that in the, you do that, that costs money. When you're, if you're going to do it the right way, it costs money. So you can't sell. If you want to go sell on Amazon, it's going to cost you $5 a month more for a multivitamin that works versus a cheap one that you can get there and people shop on price. That goes back to your thing about the internet and influencers. So they aren't experts. They're getting paid to do something and sell something. And, and okay, I get all that, okay? That's a free economy, it's capitalism, whatever you wanna call it. When it comes to nutrition, the things that you're gonna put inside your, I, I don't care what you wear. Well, I don't care what goes on top of your body. Buy the cheapest one, do whatever you wanna do. But inside your body, you should really look into that and then stick with practitioner products only. So that's us. That's what we do. And that's, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to necessarily promote us. We're in the gyms. I get that, but we're also online connected to the gym. So people can experience it, you know, getting the right stuff. Otherwise it's a crapshoot. It's a crapshoot. And because no one has to test their supplements to sell them. We do because we're a practitioner product. And so that's why we're the biggest in the NFL. We're the biggest in the NBA. They buy all our products from us, you know, for their players and so forth. Well, and I think it really can be quite dire because from what I understand, what some other products that, and we don't need to name names, but things that you can click and put in your shopping basket and have delivered in your door via Amazon, like some of the realities of what's in there, from what I understand is quite concerning. Well, it is. Amazon just got sued, but it's not their fault. Well, I, you know, they blame Amazon. You blame GNC. You can't blame their retailers. They just stick stuff on the shelf and sell it. Hopefully the manufacturer they bought it from did all the right things or whatever. And of course, we find out they did it. You know, one of my sons actually made it to the NFL. And the first letter he got was this. It goes, it goes, you're, you're not allowed to shop at GNC. Because they don't follow the rules for there's certain supplement selling that if players are allowed to use. And I go, well, why would any human be allowed to shop there then? I mean, you get my, I'm making a joke a little bit. So, um, but at the same time, but all true. And then on the other side, Amazon just got hit last year with all kinds of lawsuits. I love what they did. So the F, it wasn't the FDA, it was the FTC or you know one of the groups. They come in there and they grabbed all the five stars. So every, anybody, tell, tell your audience this right now. Every supplement, that's got a five-star rating. It's all bogus. 100% of the star ratings on supplements are bogus. Don't ever look at those. We're not allowed to. A practitioner product, we're not allowed to use any type of influencer or star ratings because obviously we have the science. And all you gotta do is click on something, you'll see the studies, you know, everything else. But anyway, so they did, they grabbed all these immune supporting supplements and they tested them. There was like nothing in half of them. The other ones had one tenth of what was on the label, and none of them had any scientific backing to support immune. So they had to, you know, Amazon just kicks all those out. They just move on. They just yeah. move on to the next group. You know, after the they it probably so, made so much money off of it because so many yeah, exactly. people were all of a sudden exactly. concerned about immunity over yeah. the last couple of years, where <laughs> people sure. felt like their health was threatened, and yet 
yeah. the reality was not a lot of people were talking about nutrition at that point in time yeah. anyways. Yeah, exactly. And, and now they are, trust me. The supplement industry has gone way up. But, that, that, but to your point, how do you pick them? You know, you can't just go, you can't just, can you imagine Mr. and Mrs. Jones going to a health food store and looking at a label of like a supplement, okay? So let's say they're looking at a label of a calcium and they're saying, okay, there's calcium, there's magnesium, there's vitamin D, there's uh, vitamin K. Now this happens to be the best because it's got all the stuff in it. But but if you're looking and go, there's how many milligrams? Do you think they know how many milligrams of vitamin K1 right. they need to make that calcium work or vitamin K2? Or are they just looking for the calcium supplement? So oh, that's yeah. how manufacturers they under they they they're, they are under formulated because it saves the money because they sell on price they don't sell on efficacy they sell on price. I always find market. it funny that you know the people that have the luxury cars or the luxury bikes and they're more concerned about the like octane of fuel they're putting in their vehicle versus what they're actually putting in their body and are more researched on that. And I mean, I, I'm guilty too. I know I have a wealth of learning to do and, you know, I'm edging closer to 40 now and all of a sudden different things hurt and things don't move as they used to. And you start to wake up to the fact I need to be an active participant in the change or else I'm going to be facing the repercussions. And truthfully, when you look at past behavior, you may already be working against a whole lot if you've gone through the traditional diets of Western society and how it's laid out. And you can't really like blame people too much because there is a lot of distraction and everything pulling you in different directions. But the information is there if you want it to be there. And kind of on that note, you mentioned your channels are through health clubs, are through gyms. So tell me a little bit about the importance of nutrition programs within gym spaces and what those really should involve. Because I know sometimes people say, well, it's not my scope of practice, whereas it, it should be built in because it goes hand in hand. Yeah, it, it does. But and again, I get it. There, there are gyms that really just want to sell memberships and be an exercise house, if you will. And that's fine. That's what they were designed to be, because all the original members of gyms in the 30s, 40s and 50s, their whole life was eating when they left the gym. So there was never any issues. That's what it was. Then it evolved into where, hey, just let's get everybody in here. And then, then everybody's trying to lose weight rather than gain muscle like the old days and performance. So now they're trying to lose weight. And of course, that's all diet. All diet. Exercise is not a weight loss solution. Never has been, never will be, you know, you know, unless you're going to do six hours a day and not have time to eat. So, you know, we know that when it comes to weight loss, every doctor will tell you that as well. Every, all the studies will tell you that when it comes to weight loss, of course, it's, it's hundred percent diet. Exercise helps it, but it's, you, you, you definitely have to have that. So it, it was a natural progression to do that, but if you're going to do it, so if a gym's going to get involved with nutrition, one thing we've learned, now ours are all skilled, they go to school, they get the certification, all of our clubs, uh, um, the, the, the trainers know what to do, they put a simple nutrition, so it is in their scope of practice. Not clinical. We do nothing clinical. We don't, you've got a problem. That's a doctor's issue and everything else. Now we work with the doctors though. So in other words, we, here's the exercise program. Here are the supplements. They show them to their doc if they're on medication. Doctors always bless it perfectly. So it's a great little synergy. That's the ideal situation. But you know, there are gyms that don't offer nutrition. Then you're going to have to go find it somewhere else, you know, which is, which is the whole reason I brought it into the gym. Or someone's going to sign up at the gym. They're not going to go out and spend a bunch of money, go sign up at some nutrition place at the same time. That's not going to happen. We've got to put it together. It's just a natural evolution of what we do. One hour a day. What about the other 23? One hour a day is when you're doing all the damage to your muscles and you're doing all this work. That just sets the stage for what you want to happen. Nutrition makes the movie. What you put into your body. So bad nutrition, bad movie. Same nutrition, same movie. It's a plateau. You can't, you don't change it all. You know, so again, that's why nutrition is so important. You know, people don't realize it. Exercise doesn't build muscle. It tears down muscle. That's all it does. If you don't eat, you just shrink and die. You know, so obviously re everything, the recovery side is the nutrition piece. And just concentrating on that, you know, and every trainer should at least pass that off to somebody. But one of the reasons we created the All-in-One Super Blend, we know people aren't going to do programs like we do in the gyms. We spend a lot of time with our personal training with nutrition programs and then all the other supplements. But the Super Blend can at least fill that bigger gap. When that person leaves, they can get all the stuff that they need in one shot. You know, and that's, that works. Well, and, you know, I constantly say when we're talking about technology, we live in the future. And I feel like 
similarly towards products like this. So tell me a little bit about what went into the development of All-in-One Super Blend and really the why. I mean, you touched on it there, but what really resulted in you wanting, because I'm sure it takes a lot of effort, money, time to create a formula like this. Yeah, this is this is uh, two years in the making and six different manufacturers before one could actually make all that stuff taste good. Okay, so that's Fair. the tough part. <laughs> Yeah, so you know what happened was with all our gyms, and again, we're in a we're in a couple thousand gyms uh, with our nutrition programs and so forth. And so all of them were they're they're going. My clients are buying all these greens products, you know, and the greens would have like you know either spirulina or a couple of some green algae, and then they would have a couple of vitamins in it and a couple of minerals. And they're every one of them, including the top seller. I'm not going to name any names here, but even the top seller, we all know it is, are way under formulated. In other words, you're taking it for a reason, thinking you're doing your body some good. Is it better than nothing? Mm, barely, barely. Okay. Um, so, you know, again, it's like, so I'm going, okay, these people are buying something that is really not doing what they want to do, help them live a longer, better life. That's what, it, that's what you're trying to do. So what we did is we took all of our top formulas that our athletes use and all our uh, members use when they work with trainers, our complete multivitamin, which has all 20 of the known under-consumed nutrients, our super antioxidant, it has the alpha lipoic acid, CoQ10, lycopene, lutein, zeaxanthin, ostoxanthin, and we took a probiotic and we took digestive enzymes and put that into one formula so it wouldn't be a bunch of pills, a powder, added two full servings of vegetables. Now, all these other ones talk about greens. They don't even have any greens in it. Some of them have some greens, but I mean, like they can't make a claim. They have two full servings of vegetables. Only we can. We went to a place called True Serve where they actually take the kale leaves and the spinach and they actually just grind them up, dehydrate them. So you get, it's even better than two full servings of vegetables because you've broken the bonds that normally tie up the nutrients. That's in there. No one else can make that claim on the planet. The other ones don't. They don't, like I said, they hardly have any greens. So you got, and you got six grams of fiber and a prebiotic, which feeds the probiotic. Probiotics are the one of the fastest growing categories in the world. And what you what you want to happen, that just reforms your microbiome, you know, your gut, which is the second brain of the body. That tells the rest of the body what's going on environmentally. Do this, do this. Bad guys coming. Fire up the immune system. Fire up cardiovascular system properly. That's what it does. So what it does with a with a prebiotic, it feeds those good bugs and pushes the bad bugs out. You have trillions of bugs in your. I know it sounds terrible. Trillions of we need bugs <laughs> in your. You might, yeah, we did exactly. And we, but you don't want all the bad guys winning. So we got to push them out. When you live in environments like us, when you've got uh, you know just a, not just pollution, but the foods, the processed foods, the bad guys win in your gut. And so now you got all kinds of issues. So we put that prebiotic in there to feed the probiotic. And then we added, here's what we, we have never gone down this road before, Chrissy, because mushrooms are like the mushroom blends are like the biggest thing out there right oh, now. I Oshkogan. am obsessed over every documentary. Yeah. It is so fascinating. So it, is. Uh, it, it really <laughs> is. I love it. I love it. So we got the mushroom blends. Now, the, what, the two things that we're looking that you look at with mushrooms are skin and cognitive support. You watch your skin, it almost kind of reverse ages when you're using like a reishi or a chaga, which are the ones that we have, the two different blends. The problem is these other ones have mushroom blends, not enough to do anything for a small rat. If you look at the dosage on there, they hide the dosages by saying, here's the blend of all of this stuff that's in there. Here's the total. Don't buy anything. That is a non-starter. If they don't break down every single ingredient and tell you what the dosage of every single ingredient, never touch that product because they're hiding something. They're hiding something. Just give you a total. Okay, so we make sure you've got the right 1,200 milligrams of a mushroom blend. Then you've got the ashwagandha at 500 milligrams. Never used ashwagandha in my life because, again, I'm one of these guys that supplemented my whole life. I've never taken a medication for anything in my life except for painkillers the first week after an athletic surgery because you got to we'll do that. that one. Trust me. And, <laughs> but that and probably wasn't enjoyable not... for you, I bet. Oh, oh, no, it wasn't. First time I ever yeah. had to take any medication for anything. And then the other thing, I almost tried not to once after I had a, I tore a Quantan and playing basketball. Uh, and you I can't go, chase okay. pain. <laughs> no, you can't do that. And you can't, I swear to God, that was the biggest mistake of my life. I was going to kill myself. So I learned my lesson on that so anyway but i'm so i've i've never had I've all my filled all my gaps everything ashwagandha which is of course three thousand years old in in asian medicine 
uh, they are not just medicine, but just daily life. It's in everything. Kids grow up using it and so forth. It, the, the stress difference in my life, and don't forget, I'm involved with billion dollar companies. So yeah, we've got a little stress in your just life, touch, but I you deal know. with it well. <laughs> but I but I deal with it pretty well. And I but I sleep like a 70-year-old where I got broken sleep, but I go right back to sleep. Ashwagandha, after about 40 days of use of that thing, all of a sudden I'm just going, and that's just in the super blend as well. I just I'm sleep like I was when I was a 25-year-old bodybuilder. Close your eyes, wake up later, and then you're done. And uh, same thing with stress. So there's a lot to say about the herbs. Then we have turmeric, which is another big anti-inflammatory herb that you know the whole world's used for a long, long time. So all that is in the super blend. Now try to make that taste good. Six grams of fiber, two full servings of vegetables, and all of that other stuff. You know, and a that multivitamin. That was the whole two and, years right there. <laughs> that was two years right there. I got to tell you. And so we always compare it against other, you know, the pretenders out there. And in taste tests, they always won the taste test. That's all we needed to know. It's not a chocolate milkshake. But if you mix it with like a protein powder, it tastes like one. It tastes like a vanilla milkshake, so and like an orange creamsicle. So it turned out really well. You can drink it any way you want with water. So that's why we did it, to solve for people being hoodwinked by this stuff that's not going to do you any good over time. That's number one. And number two, so the people in our gyms that are spending, by the way, 85% the, uh, of our gym members spend $96.50 every store trip to a supplement, buy supplements, $500 a year. Well, and they don't know what they're buying. So we're just solving it. We're trying to get deeper penetration. The only, the fortunate people in our gyms are the ones that work with our trainers because they get them the supplements. But most of the people in the gym don't, can't afford a personal trainer. So get them a one and done supplement. That was the goal. Deeper penetration into the population. Keep you away from big pharma the best we can. No, absolutely. Because exactly that, yeah. it just becomes, I feel like once you teeter over the edge and that is a part of your life, it's exactly what I said before, where it just ends up treating side effects. And I really think prevention, I mean, we're hearing that term used so much more in regards to health clubs, gyms, and really whole health where we're like, how can we do preventative health care? I know that you're really interested in studying longevity. So let's say I want to live to 100. What's my best path to get there? And is there a best path to yeah. get there? Yeah. Okay. So I call that place, man. So I, I, I uh, actually trademarked that name a long time ago because we would work with pro athletes and uh, GMs when they, they would send them to our facilities, get them on a nutrition program. You know, they, like Shaquille O'Neal, when he, when he came to us, we had to get like 60 pounds off them so we could last <laughs> four years longer. So it's place man, right? Um, so we always talk about play span versus, you know, and then I thought about, well, everybody wants to play to the end of the days. So your play span should last as long as your lifespan. And it can, depending on when you start doing the right things, when you start filling your gaps, all the things we talked about, because filling your gaps will keep you active. Remember, you got to do that first. Everything starts with nutrition. That is the root cause to everything that goes wrong is poor nutrition is the root cause to almost everything. Not uh, everything, but uh, to your point you earlier, two thirds to three quarters of everything that goes wrong, the root cause is nutrition. So those are the things that are preventable by filling our gaps. And by the way, Chris, I don't know if you know this, but the prenatal multivitamin mineral, that is, that, that is nothing more than a multivitamin mineral, the prenatal. Right. And that became mandatory by every medical organization, dietetic organization, ADA, AMA, American Pediatrics Association, became mandatory that you were supposed to prescribe a multivitamin mineral to every person that was trying to conceive or had conceived. That became law in, in, in all, the, all, the, all the worlds. And guess what that did? That single moment of filling those gaps wiped out over 30% of all major birth defects and 55% of stillborn births. Why would you ever stop filling your gaps? You come out, yeah, it's we not going to get any better. Yeah, we do. I know, we do. That's what I mean. It, it doesn't make any sense. So that's the first thing you need to do. You never stop, okay? And the good news is when you're breastfeeding and you're taking your multi, then the kid's still getting it, right? And then when they're off that, they get a baby formula. Guess what that is? That's a supplement too, okay? Yeah. So they're filling their gap. But after that, you got problems. The kids stop eating vegetables. They stop, they don't eat, you know, all this other stuff. So you're they're setting a road to failure already. So starting then, so that's what you can do. If you fill those gaps, that'll keep them active. Kids that don't get enough calcium, vitamin D, and vitamin K growing up fracture eight times more than kids that do. That means they're never going to play ball. They're going to stop moving. And the, the, the whole cyclic the cycle you were just talking about starts, all right? Your medications, and you taking a medication to offset this one. Those things are avoided by filling your gaps from day one, getting enough protein from day one. Those are the two most important nutritional things that you can do to make sure you're getting what you need to keep building that structures. Because what here's what people don't know. 
the trillions of cells in our we have trillions of cells in our body okay trillions every day they are replacing themselves or rebuilding themselves every day that's what the vitamin minerals those are the construction pieces we need so guess what you don't get enough in there every day you don't have a very good building it's pretty simple you know so that's once we fill those gaps that keeps keeps us active, we feel better, and we move more, all those great things. So that's the beginning, because your play span should equal your lifespan. Which, And what I mean by that is, if you live to be 100, and you can, you fill your gaps and you stay active. Those are the only two things you got to do, but you're not going to take, you're not going to be active first and then fill your gaps. Fill your gaps, just like the prenatal, all the way through life, and you're going to want to stay active. And it also helps control your appetite and all those things. So you're not craving things so you're not getting. But if you if you if you live to be 100 105 and you're a golfer let's say okay you should be at 100 or 105 you should be on that favorite golf course of yours whether it be pebble beach get up there on the 18th green sink that putt drop dead right there in the green bang perfect life you probably weren't playing as well as when you were 30 but the same thing if you're a cyclist let's say you were a cyclist you race cy bicycles when you're in your 20s or 30s okay but you're 105 now and you did all the things i told you right there just fill your gaps get all that kind of stuff and next thing you know you're you're 102 years old you're in there you go out in the garage you get that bike no one had to help you because don't forget you, these people nowadays got 10 family members dragging you around for the next 15 years you get on that bike you ride around the block because you're not as good as you used to be but you ride around the block you park in the garage you drop dead in the garage floor perfect life that's the way it should be and that would change everything about our world today. It would make the world. That's why you save the world through fitness. You have a health cabinet rather than a medicine cabinet. That's what it is. Well, and I think even branching off of that, when you say, you know, most people would love a longer play span. And I think of how many people I know that no longer play or they say, I don't have energy to. And so I don't feel like right. it. And we know that we have a huge mental health crisis of people dealing with depression and anxiety. And it really does loop back to if we had movement and we if we had fuel, you would crave that play span. I don't know what human beings right. like, oh, I just want to sit on the couch. That's my dream life. Yeah. Like, I don't think any of your ending stories of like 100 and sat on the couch and boom, and that's the happy ending. It's absolutely not. So right. I think it's so important to have voices like yours that are elevating because this is all it available to us. As you look ahead into 2024 and beyond, how do you see the future of fitness, the future of nutrition really adapting and changing over the short term? Because I do feel like yeah. there's been a big shift recently. So yeah. Yeah. The shift did come from COVID. No question. People are now thinking about their health. They're, they're thinking about healthy aging. They are now quite familiar with uh, what we call pre-existing conditions that set you up for being really sick or even dying from something that should not be more than a cold. Okay, they, they are very sensitive to that. And they have also have a distrust in big pharma. And I'm not just talking about the fact that big pharma put us in the opioid addiction stuff. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that they give you a medication, they just run you through, here's a medication for this. The commercials on TV are outrageous. You know, they're just trying to sell Whenever you, I travel to the sell States, you drugs. Because it's like, oh. we have it a bit in Canada, but not to the level. Yeah. Whenever I'm traveling oh. the States, I'm like, what did I just watch? <laughs> yeah. And what kind of, and like this, right now, and now, of course, with the, all the new drugs, you know, um, Ozempic and you've got Wegovy, you know, all the new drugs for weight you. loss. Oh, screw the gym. I'll just start, uh, you know, taking these. And these things work, by the way. They are for these people that are lost in obesity and then they can't come back from it, it can actually save their life. So I'm not going to knock the drug. That's what it's for. I mean, actually, it's type 2 diabetics originally. But then we found out that it just cuts people's appetite down, right? Which is exactly what the problem was with obesity. They just can't hit their reward centers anymore. It's like being a drug addict with opioids. You can't, you got to get higher. You got to take more. You got to take more. You got to do more. Same thing with people that are lost. So it's, it is it is the right drug for them. You know, but going off it, they're going to gain it back. But now you got everybody trying to use it, everybody trying to get it, no matter what, rather than diet or exercise. So again, big pharma strikes and wins again. I mean, it's going to be a seven hundred billion dollar drug in the next few years. It's going to yep. it's going to outpace everything. And now, the good news for us on that, don't get me wrong, but I deal with a lot of as you know. I think I get so many celebrities ready for their movies. Yeah, I do all that, and they're, they're, and they're even though they'll end up end up using it just because they want to cut their appetites and keep their abs without having to do you know go crazy. But 
what it does, you end up losing a little more lean body mass during that weight loss with the, with the drugs, or well, they're called GLP, so glucagon-like a peptide uh, receptor agonist. And so what it is, it's a drug that goes in and it, and it and it activates the receptors in your body to shut your appetite down, okay, especially in the brain and a little bit in the gut, but mostly in the brain. It shuts it down. And now you actually have violent reactions to certain foods or you just don't even want that much food anymore. So you end up losing much more lean body mass, okay, and yet there's a lot of GI distress. But, um, and so for us, what we do, everyone takes the super blend that's on it and a whey protein, and that offsets the loss of lean body mass. So at least, so for us, it's actually been a boost in, <laughs> a boost in sales. Fair enough. Well, because I know it's like muscle yeah, waste yeah. and all of that's been a huge yeah. side effect of them. And oh, huge, I mean, huge. I think for a lot of individuals, they are looking for the quick fix. And again, when you're looking for just the quick fix and you're not going to change anything of mentality or mindset, it's going to be interesting to see what that looks like down the line. But to your point, it also creates a lot of opportunity for our voices in this industry to get a little louder and say, hey, we're not knocking if that's the path, but there is yeah. a best way to potentially go about it. And you nailed it with that. It, you should have a nutrition exercise companion to it. The problem is, so here's where it goes, Chrissy. Doctors don't believe that their patients will exercise. They just, that's why they, they just don't. They're just going to take the pill. When you have high cholesterol, you can lower it through, obviously, diet and exercise, but they give you a statin you know, before that because, you know, you need to. You're, 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 they don't believe that you're going to diet and exercise, and I don't believe most people will anyway. I'll just take a pill and lower it. Yeah. I mean, that's the mentality. That Statistically, we, that they've proven you're in. right. <laughs> right. Exactly, right. exactly. So, yeah, so that's the idea of, of using these things you know, with a with a companion. See, the, the whole thing is lifestyle interventions just don't work. Well, there's not a single diet program. Everybody gains it back. 90% gain it back, you know, all their weight back in the first, you know, after five years, but about 80% of the population gains half, three quarters of it back in the first year. Same thing with these drugs as soon as you get off. And they cost anywhere from $800 to $1,300 a month and insurance doesn't pay for it yet, you know, even, unless you're morbidly obese. So anyway, it's going to be a it's it's going to be a, a quite a show to see how it does. To your point, the long term effects of this now because you got to stay on it lifelong. I, we don't see a you can if you do a nutrition component, which would make you want to be active. That if you do that from the very beginning, there may be an easy off ramp to normalcy, an easier one getting off there. But if you're not, if you're just losing lean body mass, you're not going to want to work. To your point, you're not going to want to work out. You're not going to want to move when you're losing both fat and lean body mass. And I think that's the problem. That's why they've got to really, I would suggest every doctor or anybody is working with these people like this. And by the way, one of the gyms, Lifetime Fit, Family Fitness, mm -hmm. they actually have sh given people shots in the back room. You got to be kidding me. You know, yeah, so anyway, well, I, and I know it's I like not it. even yeah. Yeah. gonna, it's for forecast not even to just be them going forward yeah. like i'm oh, sure absolutely. at the end of the day you i mean you said the billions that this industry is growing into and the reality is and through no fault because business is business people are like yeah. i would like a piece of that please absolutely and i and i get it I, so it's, it's 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 a good move i don't know how many people are going to be doing that especially when there are people that walk in there are not really overweight <laughs> so who knows how that's all gonna the privacy issue of it but the bottom line is it is, it's here to stay and it's going to keep coming. There's more drugs coming out. They're even more powerful than Ozempic and uh, uh, Wegovy uh, that are out there right now. They're just being released and just got approved also. So, and again, it's really just about controlling appetite and it does it in a weird way. And by the way, and one of the other side effects that this is, might surprise you a little bit, it turns off that reward center. Now, when you go and food, you don't even, it's almost a societal thing. You don't even enjoy the food anymore. You know, so there's a significant portion of people there that don't. And if soup, food is such a big part of our social environment. And it is for me enjoying food. You know, I earn it. So it's good. You know, I know how to control it. I pig out at a big dinner. Trust me I, completely. I just make it up, you know, in the next few days, you know, one way or another. Well, and I think there's a big misconception, too, that eating well or eating healthy it doesn't taste good. Like anyone that has ever shifted their diet in the right direction and is getting proper nutrition. I mean, obviously filling in the gaps as need be, but you feel so good once you start fueling right that I also feel like you don't crave it if you're, but it takes a while to build that habit. And I think for so many people, the cravings, I mean, 
you look into sugar, my God. Uh, and people just always associate sugar with desserts. Look at a label. It's in so many things. And so it's, it is that addictive quality for a lot of people. And I think the mindset shift is so tremendous for a lot of people. And I think that's why partnering with a fitness professional is one of the best ways to go because it keeps you accountable because no wonder, I mean, for most of us, there's no shame in being like, I need, if you've been doing something a certain way for decades, it seems very fair that investing in help to get you through the other side of that's probably the way to go. And I find it fascinating that number one barrier, I'm sure for a lot of people, they say cost. Well, what's the cost of your play span in your mind? Why aren't we getting curious about that question? Yeah, exactly. I mean, literally for, you know, a, a, a health club membership and an eighty nine ninety five a month with everything nutritionally your body can possibly use. And then you're sort of free on the other side of that, you know, daily. I mean, come on, that's you, you can't you can't you can't pay for insurance like that. That's uh, doesn't get any better than that, for sure. Well, I'm going to round out the conversation with some of your key takeaways. But before we do that, when it comes to all in one super blend, how can people get their hands on the product? Yeah, I mean, they can go to the all in one super blend .com and use the gym code. If you have a gym code, put it in there, you'll get a discount. I remember, I'm trying to tie everything to a health club one way or another. Definitely. Otherwise, you just pay an extra 10 bucks a month or whatever. Or you can go to any of our clubs. Uh, most of our clubs actually carry it, you know, your UFCs, your crunches and so forth and move up in Northwest where you guys are actually, uh, they all carry a lot of it. And, you know, they really got some good penetration into their membership base. They can do that. And also dotfit.com. You can, you can sign up in there and get the information, click on that and get that information. Otherwise, superblend.com uh, will have, uh, you can go in there and you can get all your stuff there as well. Brilliant, Neil. Well, I have so appreciated this conversation. Genuinely, I knew that you were going to be a fascinating individual. And then I feel like you over delivered. And I hope that we get the opportunity to kind of get granular about some of these in the future. But we are traveling into a new year. So what's kind of the, the final sentiment you would like to leave us with as we head into 2024? I would really like people to start thinking about, you know, the old Benjamin Franklin saying an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And start thinking it's, it's easier and better to stop something from happening in the first place than it is to fix it after it's happened. It's that, and that's just the mindset. The problem is, is when you're young, you're immortal. You're not thinking about the other side. Well, guess what? That starts sitting, old age starts sitting in right after puberty. When you stop growing and the height stops and everything else, you are now old age is setting in. Humans were not designed to live past their mid-20s. You know, but we cheated death. We figured out how to do that. So you got to start thinking about living that long and being active just like you were when you were in your teens and your 20s. And I think that's it. Just a, And it's so easy. I wish, I mean, people go, well, I've got to go, I've got to work out five days a week. I've got to eat, you know, these perfect meals. No, you don't. You can pretty much eat what you want, just it's how much you eat, not what you eat, and then fill your gaps. And that will keep you active. And, you know, simple just walking every day a mile or two or standing and pacing in your office can get you started. And then hopefully you'll get to one of our clubs. And that's the other thing I meant to tell you that we have a group of clubs up in Canada, you know, Chris Smith's clubs up there, you know, the fitness world and so forth. And they'll be, well, you can get the super blend through them as well. They'll be having as well. But Brilliant. anyway, that's, that's what I want to do. That's what I want. Just think about how easy it is. Don't make it hard. It's really easy. Well, Neil Spruce, I so appreciate your time. I really appreciate your expertise. It's been such a pleasure to actually meet you face to face. Well, thanks. And I'm honored to be on your show here. I really appreciate you inviting me. You've just listened to the All Things Fitness and Wellness podcast hosted by Chrissy Van. This episode was brought to you by Fitness World, your fitness, your way. Be sure to hit like and subscribe. We have new podcast episodes weekly featuring industry insiders and influencers. Together, we're on a mission for everyone to live a life fit and well.